All right, next I'll say a few things about Ernest Rutherford. And here's a picture of him. He was a physicist from New Zealand, although he actually moved to England and worked at the Cavendish Laboratories there, the famous famous physics lab in England. He lived in the um, late 1800s and early 1900s, lived on up into the 1930s. And he actually discovered a lot of the things that we've been talking about. He discovered the concept of nuclear half-life, and he, he figured that out just by noticing that materials that decayed, decayed by the same proportion in, in the same amount of time. And he's the person who coined the terms alpha radiation and beta radiation. And he is also um, the guy who discovered that atoms have a nucleus. And he did that with a famous experiment uh, called the gold foil experiment. And he was the first person to perform artificial transmutation. He changed one element into another. And we're going to talk about these two experiments that he did, the gold foil experiment and the artificial transmutation. And we'll, we'll start with the gold foil experiment. All right, first the gold foil experiment. And Rutherford did this in 1909. And here's what he did. He had a sheet of gold foil. And let's imagine this seen from the edge. So this is supposed to be a perspective view. And he had some alpha particles. And these were coming from decaying uranium and he had these aimed at the sheet of gold foil. And by gold foil, I just mean a very thin sheet of gold. Gold can be hammered out into a very, very thin sheet, just a few atoms thick. And so these were little positive particles flying at the sheet of gold foil. And here's what he expected to, to occur. He expected the, the particles to penetrate the gold foil, but for them to be deflected when they came close to negative charges in the gold. And the idea at the time was that the atoms looked something like this. They were these blobs. I'm going to draw the atoms in here in the gold foil, and I'm going to magnify them really, really big. They're obviously not really this big. But the atoms were kind of seen, were thought of as blobs like this. And it was thought that the electrons uh, just kind of swam around inside these blobs of positive material. So the atoms, this was sometimes called the plum pudding model because plum pudding apparently, and I'm, I don't know that I've ever had plum pudding, but it's apparently has, has like raisins or nuts or something in there that just kind of float in the blob of pudding. And they thought that the electrons were the negative charge floating around in this blob of positive charge. So what he expected to happen was a, a, a alpha particle flying through here. If it came close to an electron, the, the pull on the... The, because of the electrostatic charge would cause it to change course a little bit. And he expected to have these, these uh, alpha particles deflected a bit as they went through the gold foil. Now here's what actually happened. Had a sheet of gold foil, something like this, and these alpha particles aimed at the sheet. So these positive particles, and sure enough, they would go through and they would get deflected some. But every now and then, one of them would hit and just bounce off. And that was a huge surprise. He wasn't expecting that at all. And he actually said it was as if he had fired a 15-inch shell at a piece of tissue paper and seen the shell bounce off. He, he, um, this was a complete surprise based on the current understanding of the atom, which was incorrect. And he figured out from this that because most of these particles penetrated the gold foil and moved on through, that the atoms were mostly empty space. And you could figure out how much of it was empty based on how they were deflected. And he figured that since some of them bounced back, they must be hitting something really hard in there, and that would be the nucleus. He figured if something was big enough to deflect the alpha particle, and, and not just deflect it, but ricochet it like that, that it must be massive. And so he figured out that most of the mass of the atom was concentrated in the nucleus, and most of the atom was other, otherwise empty space. And so in his attempt to study how the charge was distributed through the atom, which was what he was intending to do, he found that most of the charge and most of the mass was concentrated in the nucleus of the atom. And so this experiment, the gold foil experiment in 1909, it's a famous experiment. A famous experiment because it was this experiment which helped scientists understand what an atom is like on the inside and specifically that it has a nucleus where most of the mass and all of the positive charge is concentrated. Rutherford also did artificial transmutation and this was 1919 
And what he did was to bombard nitrogen gas with alpha particles, and he was able to produce oxygen as a result. So you just imagine gas like this, and these just represent little atoms of or molecules of nitrogen gas. And then here come some alpha particles, and they're flying in here. And this is what happened as a result. Imagine some a nitrogen atom right here, and a nitrogen atom has seven protons, and it has seven neutrons. And so we call this nitrogen 14, and it has a mass number of 14, that's the total of the neutrons and protons, and it has seven protons, so that's its atomic number. And then the helium nucleus comes at it, so we'll draw this over here. And the helium nucleus, as we know, is two protons and two neutrons. So the helium nucleus plus the nitrogen atom results in, and let me write this here, this is helium, and its mass number is four and atomic number is two. And that results in oxygen. So the oxygen looks like this. And the oxygen atom has eight protons and nine neutrons. And you'll notice that doesn't quite add up. Oxygen has a mass number of 17 and an atomic number of 8. There's one proton missing. If you look at this, two protons in the helium atom and seven in the nitrogen, that's a total of nine protons there. There's only eight protons in the oxygen atom. So what has to be the case over here on the right side is there's one proton left over. So let's write plus a single proton. So the alpha particle, which is the helium nucleus, plus the nitrogen results in oxygen plus a proton. So he was able to change the nitrogen into oxygen through this nuclear process, and that's transmutation, changing one element into another. Now, since Rutherford, other transmutations have been performed, and every element with an atomic number greater than 93, so that's 93 up through 116, all of those were created in an artificial process similar to this. And all of the elements uh, that are up there in atomic number, 93 and higher, all of those are very unstable. They have very, very short half-lives, so they decay very rapidly. So none of those are found in the natural world. If they ever did exist naturally, they've decayed long ago. But all of those elements were produced in this fashion. Rutherford wasn't producing those elements, but he was producing oxygen. The point is, he was changing one element into another through this process. And this is artificial transmutation, and he was the first person to do it. So that's one of many things that Rutherford is famous for.